YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, and we're going to be coming to you from the Golden Monolith today with Trilla the Trickster versus Tank. And this is going to be the finale from Shetland Apache's Warband League. Um, this was sent over to me by Aristodemos on my Discord, so appreciate him sending this. It's going to be um, a couple of matches. I, I believe, from what I can tell, the finals were a, a best of three. And um, I think that the players have to keep the same faction. Um, and the same army for each match. I'm interpreting this based on what I see in the uh, replays that were sent. Um, and so we're going to uh, kind of watch it from that standpoint. So it is Wood Elves versus Vampires. A really interesting matchup. Wood Elves are the fast-moving, hard-hitting, you know, very glass faction, right? They, they're quick. They fall apart easy, but they can do a ton of damage if they do it right. Um, I mean, typical type of play you're going to see from elves in either Warhammer or 40k, from what I hear. I don't do a ton of 40k, but um, yeah, typical gameplay for them. Uh, they're going to be led by a Spellweaver of Beast, who is rocking um, Curse of Honor Air, which is an interesting one. I mean, it does debuff melee attack a lot for 40 seconds, um, and it takes away accuracy and speed, so it's, it's got a great slowing effect and a melee debuff. And the vampires are already slow for the most part. Obviously they have some units that are fast. Um, so this is an interesting play by the, the Wood Elves. We'll see whether they make use of it. They also have Pan's Impenetrable Pelt, which can basically make a unit stronger and faster for a short period of time. And then Wissens Wild Form, which again, can increase their damage and their armor. Uh, this is all for a single unit, those, those last two spells are. Now, as far as the rest of the Wood Elf army, uh, the Spellweaver is going to be supported by a Glade Captain. Glade Captains are really solid units in the anti-large department. Nice speed, and they have a decent ranged attack as well. Uh, you can see some damage already on the Wood Elves. Uh, that was actually from the White Kings, who are using the Scabscrath um, a, a spell, which is bound to the blade that they can bring. It's an item, so it's actually very effective. Both White Kings have it. We'll talk about them later. Um, but uh, for the rest of the Wood Elf army, we've got a few Eternal Guards up front, and then there's a lot of cavalry. Like, it's a very mobile army. Some Blade Singers in the back. It's a very niche unit. You can see it's being kept far from the vampires. Um, the Wood Elf, and, and it's set to its um, stance where it does less damage against AP and does more base damage. So it's better against low armor targets. You can swap the Blade Singers between modes. Um, so there are a couple of Glade Riders with spears. These are just light cavalry, probably meant to... You know, give a little bit of mobility, and uh, they're, they're a shock cavalry unit. They don't have a massive charge bonus, but again, against weak units, they can get some work done. And then the main damage dealing component for the Wood Elves is going to be a couple, uh, or sorry, there is a uh, Deep Wood Scout with Swift Shiver Shards here. It's a shorter range, but higher damage archer. And then they are supported by some Glade Guard with Hagbane tips. Um, this is on either flank. And then there is a Glade Guard with Starfire Shafts, which is a flaming armor piercing. Uh, variant, so lots of different variants here. Another scab scrap coming out of the White Kings here. They are trying to do what damage they can. Basically, the Wood Elves are attacking right now. They're shooting, but they're refusing to get into a melee engagement. And uh, this is probably how the Wood Elves should play. I mean, unless you're going to go in an all-out melee build against the Vampires, which is risky, I think, with the Wood Elves. Um, it's not impossible, but it's risky. Um, and so they're playing, obviously, in a, in a more skirmishy way. I don't know how this tournament goes, but typically in tournaments, one player has to be attacking. And again, depending on the rules, but typically, from what I've seen, it's considered attacking. Look at another scab scrap there. These white kings are really getting some work done. So, yeah, these two white kings on foot, um, and the only ability, and I'm trying to remember the name of the ability. Let me get it right here. It's, uh, yes, yeah, just called scab scrap. It's, um, I guess it's a, it shows a blade on the little icon here, but yeah, the Scabscrath ability gives them up to three of these breath spells. So that's six breath spells that are attached to these two White Kings, and I, they're roughly 600 gold in cost. They're very much worth it. They're very tough in melee, and they help support the leadership of nearby units. you got a front line of zombies backing up some skeleton warriors, um, and then you're going to have some Black Knights um, here supporting the vampires. A couple of Vargeist. Now remember, Vargeist deal armor-piercing damage now. They're still very squishy in melee, but they dish a lot of damage, especially on the charge. Then you got a Blood Dragon Vampire Lord here, and uh, he's rolling around on the Zombie Dragon. As far as abilities go, Helm of Discord, which is a great debuff on melee attack and defense. And then you're going to have Raise the Dead, which he used right there to try and get some archers stuck. Um, it's a typical move from the Vampires. Invocation into Heck, and then Pestilent Breath, of course, for the Dragon. 
And look right here, these um, Eternal Guards get caught out, and they're going to be swamped by the Vampires. And uh, this is good, because the Vampires will get some damage done, and they have the Zombies creating a little bit of trouble at the moment. There's a Sister of the Thorn, I forgot to call it earlier. Um, but it also blobs them up where they can take more damage. There's that Curse of Honor Air. When all these units got blobbed together, Wood Elf player popped it to debuff them in melee, make this fight take longer, and uh, basically bog the vampires down. So it's actually a pretty cool play there, I think, by the Wood Elves to try and delay this fight even longer while they keep shooting. Now, as far as the other mobility component, you got some Wild Riders. I mentioned the Blade Singers, and then you have the Sisters of the Thorn, which are um, obviously a, a mounted cavalry that are a little bit better than your typical uh, Glade Guard. The rest of the Vampire Army, uh, actually I think we finished the Vampire Army, so that's pretty much it. Let's check out how this battle plays out. Bit of a fight going on over here. The Wood Elves committed another Eternal Guard unit here that actually got instantly terrified. Uh, their archers are now safe from the zombie threat, and the Vampires are blobbed up pretty bad. Now, interesting here, this is where, in my opinion, the lore of Beast shows a weakness, and it's, it's typically hard to pull off in a competitive 1v1 like this, but he did a good job of getting the vampire significantly blobbed. Now, it's possible that the vampire player is only blobbing because they know that the wood elf player does not have a vortex or breath spell that will punish them for this. There's no flock of doom or anything else like that now. So it could totally be that the vampire player tank here just really did a good job of scouting and knows, okay, it's safe for me to blob and fine. Uh, now, that said, one way that you can prevent this kind of thing or punish it is by making sure that you have something to punish a blob. Again, a little bit riskier in 1v1 because those Vortex spells just aren't always worth it. Uh, but there are Breath spells like Penumbra Pendulum, and um, I'm trying to think, uh, the Lore of Life has some really good uh, blob busting too with um, Awakening of the Wood and uh, the Dwellers Below. So both of those are great at controlling crowds. Got some Wild Riders here that got engaged by a Blood Knight unit. Uh, this is going to be uh, pretty much death for them, but the Curse of Andre Air is going to slow down what the Blood Knights can do and give the Wood Elves a little bit longer. And Sisters of the Thorn had to interrupt a Black Knight here to keep it out of their foot archers. You can see the Scab Scratch just keep going off. This one hit the Blade Singers, and that's going to be really big for the Vampires because these Blade Singers are a very expensive unit and honestly could probably chew through most all of the Vampire infantry here if there were no intervening factors. I mean, these, they've already got almost 100 kills. Um, now, the vampire infantry they're killing is trash, and it won't really pay back, quote-unquote. Um, but, you know, payback is not always what it seems when you're looking at damage value on the stats screen. I mean, if you stop most of a vampire army, regardless of whether it shows much value and it helps you win the match, then it paid back, right? Um, in any case, we can see this fight continuing on. The vampires are doing a pretty good job, in my opinion. The, uh, the fight is pretty close. The Wood Elves definitely still in fightable position here, though. They've got their uh, they've got their multiple bow units. I think what's going to be rough for the Wood Elves is they're running out of Glade Guard, and their Blade Singer took an enormous amount of damage off those Scab Scraths. Otherwise, I mean, if, if they didn't have Scab Scrath, like I said, I'm pretty sure this Blade Singer can mop up just about every unit over here without too much problem, uh, assuming it didn't get blasted by the Vargeist and the Zombie Dragon. Uh, Wood Elves have done a good job at causing a lot of damage to the uh, the zombie dragon, and uh, done some decent damage to the Vargeist as well. Like I said, the melee is the biggest worry here for the Wood Elves, and uh, if, if they run out of melee units here, they just don't have anything that can stay in this fight uh, long enough, so they're going to have to get a ton of damage done with the archers. And let, let's say that, for instance, that the uh, Wood Elves kill the zombie dragon and the Vargeist at this point. They're still left up against two White Kings, and I... They would have a real struggle killing those White Kings. I mean, the Glade Captain is pretty good. I don't know about taking two um, White Kings. I mean, Vampire Leadership obviously drops a lot more. They did get some the Deepwood Scouts over here. But Deepwood Scouts had used all of their ammunition. So they had basically done the damage that they could do. Still have a Sisters of the Thorn here, which has now used all of its ammunition as well. <clears throat> it's it's an okay melee combatant. It's not great. But see the Blade Singers here tons of kills, and again, this is after getting hit by Scab Scrap and a whole bunch of other stuff. The Blade Singers are still just absolutely shredding uh, Vampire Infantry. And no surprise, ammunition definitely running low. You've only got a few volleys left here on this Hagbane tip unit, but it does get hit, and every archer that dies takes a few arrows with it, and at this point, that's definitely a big deal. 
as the zombie dragon is still very much alive, as are his Vargeist, and even a Blood Knight there, so the Wood Elves are in some pretty rough shape, in my opinion. I just, I don't know how they pull themselves out of this, so I think the Vampire Player made a couple of pretty key important choices here. That Scab Scrath uh, ended up paying some real dividends because it tore up the, um, the uh, Eternal Guard. And the Eternal Guard would have lasted a long time in the fight with all those. I, I didn't show you all of them, but there was at least three or four Curse of Honor errors that went off in this battle, which really debuffed the Vampire's attack to almost zero. It does it for about 40 seconds, and doing so would have made the Vampires really struggle to mop this thing up in melee. And so I, I think that the Scab Scrap, you know, like I said, it paid off. It did a ton of damage to the Blade Singers and prevented them from living up to their full potential. I mean, 300 and something kills is awesome, uh, especially considering the damage that they took. But again, imagine this unit not getting hit by Scab Scrap. It would be very, very bad for the vampires. Uh, like I said, I mean, let's look at everything that's left. You know, uh, a Blade Singer would have easily been able to mop up everything that's left and possibly done a ton of damage to the White Kings, too, given the right situation. So, again, you know, I think the vampires played that well by getting that Scab Scrap in there. Um, Blood Dragon Vampire Lord on the Zombie, a bit risky because it's a big target against the Wood Elves, but it also means that the Wood Elves are going to have to deal with a very powerful target. And uh, this Flying Squad has really nice mobility, allows the Vampires, even though most of their army is slow, but when you couple that with the pick of the Blood Knights, the Black Knights, uh, and then basically a huge army of Chaff, right? So it's like the Chaff will eat up a bunch of the arrows, which it did, and then you use your mobility to finish off the Wood Elves because they just don't have the staying power. Um, that they're going to need to uh, to finish a melee fight like this. The Blade Singers were finally sent packing, but not before they got 356 kills. Uh, again, the Archers did good damage. I mean, look at this. They're about to kill the, the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord, and it's had to heal multiple times. But it's just not enough. It's going to be too late. One last breath attack ends up killing the Spell Singer, and most assuredly ending any prayer that the Wood Elves had of pulling this off because they just couldn't hold together their leadership. Now, All right, so here we are in the next match. Again, it's the same armies, so I don't need to introduce the armies. Um, the players have kept the the same thing. Um, it's just a different map. This map has a big choke point right in the middle, some elevated positions, and the Wood Elves are looking to make use of this. They're dividing their forces, which could be really good depending on how things go, and it can also be really disastrous, again, depending on how things go. Um, sometimes you divide and conquer, other times you get divided and be conquered. It kind of just depends on what happens in a certain situation. Now the vampires are obviously playing this one a little bit patient. Um, they probably know that there has to be wood elf units hidden because they're familiar with the army from last time. And uh, they're moving forward into this main choke point. And uh, once again, the wood elves are going to come out hitting early, trying to clean up a bunch of the chaff. Um, I don't know why they're targeting the zombies um, or if it's just fire at will. You would think, if anything, you might want to go for the skeletons. They do have a shield, but, I mean, they're the more credible chaff here, whereas the zombies uh, would die to just about anything in a prolonged melee. They're just a hit point sponge, really. So over here we got um, Hagbane Tips, Starfire Shafts, uh, Eternal Guard, Blade Singers, and then the uh, Glade Riders and Wild Riders. So a nice little component here for the Wood Elves that could be used to ambush. They got their work cut out for them. If they ever get in a long engagement with the cavalry, it's almost sure to be supported by the flyers. And then if they uh, end up in a long engagement with the infantry, it's just really not what the Wood Elves want here. Now they are targeting the skeletons. This is great. They're coming in from the unshielded flank too, so they're going to get a lot of kills on these skeletons real quick. And then as the dragon draws near, it looks like the uh, <laughs> looks like a tank may be intentionally baiting shots off the starfire shafts here and then dodging... This can be a real pain in the butt uh, whenever you're relying on these arrows to be the main work for you and you really need to kill, uh, you know, a big target like this dragon, but then you're just getting baited. You know, basically you're getting baited into using your ammo and wasting it. So the Wood Elves did bring some of their units out over here. They may be attempting to try and bring the flyers in. So like, again, an ideal scenario here would be that the vampire player gets real aggressive and says, oh, I'm going to go crush these archers and just goes all in over here, gets swamped down by Wild Riders, Glade, Glade Riders, Blade Singers, and then just destroyed before reinforcements can make it in. Um, so that would be an ideal scenario when you're doing this divide and conquer type strategy. 
And, I mean, a good target here. Went after the Blood Knights and has done some very nice damage to him. Hasn't killed any units yet, but at least did a decent bit of hit point damage, which may force the use of some magic over here by the, uh, the Vampire Counts. And at this point, the Vampire Counts kind of act like they're going to swing towards this flank, but then just kind of all of a sudden decide, you know what? Nope, going this way. And I kind of like this call. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not good enough to play in tournaments, but I can see myself wanting to do the same thing here, which is, okay, I see you have a big force back here. I'm just going to turn and ignore it and go straight at this one. You know, uh, it's kind of kind of like, why mess with that stuff back there? I'm going to come over here while you're low on numbers. I'm going to totally take advantage of you. Now, the Wood Elf player, uh, Trill of the Trickster here, nice job. Here comes that Curse of Honor Air that has been used so much. Going to slow down uh, multiple units and, you know, basically delay their approach and allow the reinforcements uh, to come in. So nice play there. But here, you got a bit of a dicey situation. These flyers are powerful. There's a lot of squishy units back here, um, all of which would take a beating in melee at the hands of these vampire counts. So the uh, vampire flyers are getting all over the top of this army, and they probably want some of this juicy action here um, against the skirmishers, or at the very least just to um, keep the wood elves busy for a moment, wondering what's coming next. Nice summon here, by the way, getting a skeleton warrior up here. However, the archers look like they're going to get away from it and leave the glade captain to deal with it. At this point, uh, the Wood Elves are going to surround all the Vampire Chaff and the Cavalry, which is all in in this fight. we got White Kings down here. Curse of Honor Air again. Nice way to debuff this blob to where it won't do as much, but just not a lot of substance here for the Wood Elves to uh, go in and grind this kind of a fight out, especially when that Vampire Lord gets in there close and starts providing uh, that close combat support. Going to get rough. Here comes some Blade Riders. Looks like they're kind of cycle charging. I like the cycle charge by the Wild Riders. They got a bunch of kills pulled out. They can come back from war. We're going to see the Blade Singers come in here. And they have not been scab scrapped this time. Again, the blob here, the Wood Elves have no way to punish it. None. And uh, again, it costs money to bring those Vortex spells. May not ever pay off. But at this point right here, I mean, the Wood Elves could almost one shot win the match with the right Vortex or. Or breath spell, but again, I you know I don't I don't really blame them. There's a lot of times I go into a one v one and I just don't bother with those spells because I don't expect my opponent to blob up like this. And again, did the vampire blob up because it just happened? Did they blob up because they knew they could? I mean, it is a tournament. They're a great player, so I'm gonna assume that they knew that they wouldn't be punished for this, and uh, they aren't. So the blade singers did get hit with scab scrap again, and that scab scrap is gonna end up being a major problem. For the Wood Elves. They're going to get in. They're going to do a lot of damage. They're going to keep the fight pretty close, at least for now. But look at the chaos going on back here. The archers trying to stay alive and stay out of melee. These Glade, Glade Guard back here have a lot of ammo. They did lose some unit models, though, which is going to reduce their overall ability to pump out the damage. Looks like the Blade Singers are going to be cycle charged here. For having lost over half their hit points, 83 kills is just not going to be enough to cut it. More archers back here, along with that Spell Weaver. And no doubt they are going for, yep, they are going for the dragon. They want to kill that dragon. It's a lot of hit points. It's not an easy snipe. And the vampires are not making it easy. And you can see that one side of the Wood Elves' encirclement has been busted. And here comes the, uh, comes the Blade Singers once again. Rolling into combat, getting a really nice charge. Quickly jumping up over 100 kills. Deepwood Scouts are out of ammo. They're going to have to come into melee. Let's see what's left back here. Some Sisters of the Thorn who are out of ammo. They're, they couldn't stop this Black Knight from getting the Hagbane tips. That is a massive loss because it had a lot of ammunition. They still had 14 volleys of ammunition. And the Wood Elves usually can't afford to give that kind of stuff up. So not looking particularly great for the Wood Elves right now. The Vampire is doing a nice job of controlling this battle. So far the Divide and Conquer opportunity did not probably present itself the way that the Wood Elves would have hoped for. So uh, Trill of the Trickster finding themselves in a very difficult situation. But again, nice damage now going to the Dragon. That Curse of Honor Air is slowing it down. Blade Captain getting in there. Blade Captains are a real boss in melee against large targets like that. It does force the Dragon to get up and out of there. Between the Curse of Honor Air and the Hagbane tips, the Dragon is massively slowed. A lot of damage to the vampire chaff. There's still some in here. 
but that White King, again, see how valuable they are. They're, they're basically untouched, and that Scab's Craft, every 90 seconds, Scab's Craft becomes available, and more Wood Elves are going to die as a result. Blade Singers doing a good job cleaning up as much of that chaff as they can. It's a very niche unit. I'm kind of surprised what it's... Yep, there it comes. Both Scab's Crafts all over what's left of the Wood Elves here and just devastates them. And they can't really afford that type of devastation. Nice use of these final archers back here, though. They're both getting all their shots in. Starfire Shafts, Hagbane. Uh, they are doing some very nice damage. And, the, and again, the Vampire Chaff has been almost, almost dealt with. There's a lot of it, but again, the Wood Elves are going to get left in that position. What do they got left to deal with two White Kings? Not much. Not much. So it's going to be a very difficult thing to try and turn this around as Tank and his Vampire Counts are chasing off the Glade Captain, which was one of the best melee uh, options that the, uh, the Wood Elves had left. You can see that the Glade Captain is done. And it's so much harder to crumble all these uh, chaff units whenever they've got these units around. That Necromancer that was probably here just to suck winds of magic and use the corpse cart. I mean, all this leadership buff from the White King, the Necromancer, it makes units like Skeleton Warriors and Zombies just a real pain in the butt uh, to get out of the way. So this one is definitely going to go in favor of Tank. Tank is going to win this finale. Um, cool armies. I, I love the idea of the Curse of Honor Air army here for the Wood Elves. It's something, I, honestly, I've never thought about. Like, I've always used Curse of Honor Air for trying to disrupt accuracy with uh, missile factions. And, you know, it's okay at that. I forget about that speed debuff. And it's really an interesting idea that Trill of the Trickster put together here, I think, with I'm going to use this Curse of Honor Air to make a slow faction even slower. And I can use it. It's not a net. But if you slow people down enough, you can do a lot of damage, and especially when you're a ranged faction like the Wood Elves. So I think it's a very curious strategy, an interesting one, one that I would think might be fun for me to mess with in campaign at some point, too. Um, not to mention, obviously, it has potential application here. Um, not being able to punish the vampires with a Vortex spell was, you know, it was ultimately very brutal for Troll of the Trickster, as there's just not a lot of great way to deal with that blob of chaff without that, but again... I myself don't bring those spells a lot of times to these 1v1s, because especially if it was competitive, I just would not expect that my opponent's going to give me a lot of opportunities to pay off an expensive Vortex spell, so it, it wouldn't have been top of mind, that's for sure. Uh, however, even something like Pendulum um, could have made a big difference potentially here, but then that changes the lore of magic, and you can't use your Curse of Honor Air thing, so definitely an interesting matchup here. Uh, good job by Tank winning these two matches. Um, played well with the Vampire Counts. I think the Vampire Counts are one of those factions that can be very difficult for people to beat when played properly. They obviously have matchups where they're not as great um, and things where they struggle, but I've seen a lot of players play the Vampire Counts very well, even though they're an older faction, and a lot of people maybe think those older factions just can't hold up in today's Warhammer, but that's that's not always true. Uh, definitely not always true. Uh, anyway, great games to Tank and Trilla. Appreciate Aristodemos for sending this over. Um, I guess it was on Shetland Apache's Warband League, um, and uh, appreciate uh, all who put this together, and I'm glad I got to see the replays. These were interesting. Got to see some fun gameplay from both players. Anyway, Air of Carthage signing off for now. I'll be back soon. Some more action in Total War Warhammer 2.